My name is Carlo Soinek. I'm an ophthalmologist and a professor emeritus from the University of Iowa in USA. And my field is standardized ecography. I have been a director of ecography services since 1965, first in Vienna, Austria, and then at the University of Iowa. You may ask what is standardized ecography. It's an ultrasonic diagnostic method that has been developed for offering the fullness of capacities and diagnosis that are available for ultrasonography. Standardized ecography is a combination of B-scan and A-scan, but the special thing is the A-scan. A-scan, as you know, shows amplitudes, but the height of these amplitudes means nothing unless uh, all the parameters of the instrument and the technique that influence these amplitudes and their movement are standardized, specially designed. The optimal uh, design of the ASCAN instrument and probes are optimally designed for this purpose. This uh, allow tissue differentiation and measurements that are most precise and reliable. This special design is also extended towards the examination techniques of both B-scan and A-scan. The special design of the A-scan instrument and of the B-scan and A-scan examination techniques involved in standardized ecography are standardized. That's where the name comes from. Uh, this optimal design is standardized uh, so that we speak one echographic language with reliable, understandable, comparable and repeatable optimal results. This way, standardized ecography brings the fullness of all that can be done with diagnostic ultrasound in the anterior, posterior eye segments and the organ. With B-scan alone, whether it's accompanied by the so-called vector A-scan or not, the vector A-scan is not standardized, you can get much less than half of the information uh, that standardized ecography offers. I would like to compare it with a bird. The second wing is the standardized A scan, the first wing, one wing is B scan ecography. But uh, without both in combination, the bird will not be flying. Standardized instruments are available from Quantel Medical. The latest ones are the Cinescan S with powerful software with automatic results, diagnosis and documentation including CineLoop, A1, quantitative ecography, 1 and 2, angle kappa and more. The newest instrument just came out is the Aviso S with software package 2010 with further improved software and high frequency B scan. And Aviso S is all digital. I mentioned that standard stichography is a combination of real-time B-scan and A-scan. The B-scan gives basic information, uh, gives us the direction where to go from there on, but rarely gives us a final diagnosis. Who needs standardized stichography? It's the specialists, of course, the retinal surgeons for the clarification of an opaque vitreous, whether there is retinal detachment or just membranes or just hemorrhage. For the glaucoma specialist, whether there is more going on in the posterior eye segment, particularly in the periphery, uh, when the pupil is not dilated, whenever there are opaque media, of course. I compare the role of standardized ecography with that of ophthalmoscopy and slit lamp examination in clear ocular media. When they are opaque, for one reason or another, then standardized ecography replaces this optical means 
with the same purpose of arriving at the final diagnosis. Of course, in clear ocular media, when there is a tumor detected, standardized echography is also very important to differentiate those tumors. When you have B scan, as I show you here, uh, with the CNS scan S unit obtained with 20 megahertz of a hemangioma, the B scan shows clearly the tumor with retinal detachment, but not the type of tumor that is present. For this, we need standardized A scan. The amplitudes tell us you have here four examples of a malignant melanoma in red, of a disciform uh, lesion in green, of a coil hemangioma in yellow, and of a metastatic carcinoma in red. You see the difference in the height of spikes, in the length of spikes, and in addition to this, age can also show, of course, the uh, vascularity in the melanoma, which is not present in a metastatic tumor, not visible in a hemangioma. In the tumor differential diagnosis with standard stichography, the most frequent case will be that of an elevated benign coral nevus. You see here in this picture, on the left side, the nevus having a high reflectivity, whereas the malignant melanoma, equal size roughly, uh, very small tumors, uh, has a low reflectivity, plus is vascularized. This is important not only for the specialist who gets referrals, but for the channel ophthalmologist. The channel ophthalmologist needs standardized echography even more so, uh, because when there is no way to arrive at the diagnosis from the symptoms or the optical examination, the channel ophthalmologist needs to make a decision whether to triage, to send to specialists, or to keep the patient and, uh, and uh, treat the patient to manage the disease themselves. A good example is the orbit. Uh, unless you want to send any patient with oral symptoms right away to uh, an oral surgeon, uh, you need to know what the underlying cause is, whether it's proptosis or redness of the eye, whether it's pain or swelling of the lids. Uh, the diagnosis is very important to know what to do next. Here is a B scan showing an orbital tumor a, a, obtained with the Aviso S, a nice display of the shape of the tumor in the retrobulbar space, but the B scan does not tell you whether this is what kind of tumor that is. The B scan does not tell you what kind of tumor it is. For this, we need A scans. And here are six A scan examples of the orbit of orbital tumors. Hemangioma, mucosal, carcinoma, lymphangioma, cyst, and lymphoma, and you see how different they look in terms of amplitude of spikes, in terms of length of spikes, in ter terms of uh, a outline, whether it's infiltrative, like carcinoma and lymphoma, or has a cyst wall, like mucosal and uh, oral cyst, or is encapsulated like a hemangioma and a lymphangioma. These are only a few examples, but with standardized echography, uh, you can differentiate safely up to 50 different orbital lesions, including an important, most frequent orbital problem, Graves' orbitopathy. That their standardized echography through its measurements of the muscles is superior to the radiological uh, uh, imaging procedures, MRI and CT, as it measures the thickness of the sheath of the extraocular muscles, not just the muscles, and uh, this way it's easy to
classify the Graves' orbit Doppler day to know when the optic nerve is in danger and when to send the patient to a neuro-ophthalmologist or to a neurosurgeon or an orbital surgeon. The same is true for uh, the optic nerve. For instance, papilledema. Yes, with B-scan, large optic disc trusen can be shown very clearly. Small optic nerve trusen can provide a problem, and there we need again the A-scan to clarify whether it is trusen or whether it's just a strongly reflecting surface of the elevated disc. With standard A-scan, it's easy to measure the sheath extension of the optic nerve within the orbit in the retropalbar space and know whether there is increased intracranial pressure or not. That is so superior to uh, measuring the intracranial pressure with lumbar puncture, puncture with lumbar puncture or uh, from the symptoms. And so echography is not only making the primary diagnosis in many cases of the eye and the orbit, but also is very important for follow-up examinations to see the progress made during treatment.